one, I'm quite flexible, as I mentioned to some people earlier. Uh, just don't call me weird names, please. Right? Any questions along the way, uh, feel free to keep them for later part of the day when there is some Q&A happening. Uh, we've got a packed day. It's a packed day with a lot of uh, interesting topics uh, of discussion. Now, uh, first, of, first and foremost, let me welcome you to the Malaysian Global Business Forum, the MGBF Roundtable. Uh, this is the third edition of the MBB, uh, M MGBF uh, Roundtable, uh, focusing on cybersecurity and resilience. Now, this is a very, very interesting topic to me. Now, earlier when we were having breakfast, I was having this, this uh, similar discussion with some people who are on the panel today as well. Now, I never knew anything about cybersecurity. I never knew anything about uh, the world, the, 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 the internet world beyond you know, getting onto Google and Googling a few things here and there until I had my daughter. And when my daughter came to a certain age, as in a preteen, I started to realize that there's more to the internet than just the face of it. Right? And uh, I started to dig a little deeper and the world is far beyond bigger than the world that we are in on the net. Yeah? So having said that, I've come to realize there's a lot of uh, security that's needed for the internet, which we are all unaware of. And hopefully today in this panel and in this discussion, some of these uh, uh, issues could be addressed as well. And uh, just for, personally for my, my well-being and for all of everyone's as well. Right? Now, to start, I would like to call upon a good friend, a very old buddy of mine, uh, Mr. Norin Abdullah, our founding chairman, for his uh, welcome remarks. Please put your hands together for Norin. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning and welcome to the Malaysia Global Business Forum Roundtable <clears throat> Addressing Security Concerns in Critical Value Chains. I would like to start by recognizing all our key role players here today. Uh, whether they're here or not uh, already. Uh, of course, Tansri uh, Rafida Aziz, former Minister of Trade and Industry, will be joining us later. And, and already with us this morning is young Bahamad Senator Datuk Razadiba Radzi. Thank you, Datuk, for joining us. Real pleasure and honor to have you here. Rizal Kamarul Zaman, thank you very much, our, our Deputy Chairman of the Malaysia Global Business Forum. Colonel Shezali, who is the Senior Vice President of Strategic Re Research Division of Cybersecurity Malaysia. ACP, Sharifuddin bin Mohammed Saleh, thank you, sir, for, for joining us uh, today. It's a, a great honor to have you here as well. Francis Koh, uh, Head of Career Development of Digital National Berhad, thank you very much, Francis, also for joining us. Mr. Umpati Sivan, Co, uh, former CIO of Telecom and Chief Technology Officer of Novim. Uh, thank you also for joining us today. Uh, Cairo, uh, I call him Cairo, uh, but in his full name is Ahmad Cairo Shafizan Johari, uh, the lead editor for Astro Awani, also will be doing the uh, fireside chat later. Editor at large, also uh, Rosanna Mohammed from News Hub Asia. And of course, uh, last but not least uh, is uh, Muru. We call him Muru the Guru uh, in our meetings. Uh, he's the Chief Executive Officer of, of Novum. I would also like to, to thank our sponsors, uh, Novum, Big Data Works, and Scout Asia, uh, together with our, our media partner, News Hub Asia, and everyone uh, for joining us here today in person. Also, uh, those who are joining us uh, online as we continue to deal with the, the reality of COVID-19. We continue to have uh, virtual as well as uh, physical events. I also want to, to recognize uh, some other friends who have joined us. Matthew, Mr. Matthew Bassing, who is the, the Vice Chairman of the Malaysia Australia Business Council, who is here, as well as Dr. Badli Shah, one of the, the leading experts in Islamic finance here in Malaysia today, uh, as well as other members uh, of the media. The threat matrix is fluid. Geopolitics and the cyber realm have become front of mind issues for CEOs looking to grow market share in a constantly disrupted global business environment. 
the street environment is also dynamic and it has impacted the way countries and corporations must define sustainability and now even survivability. The end goal must be the establishment of sovereign ecosystems based on trust. This trust must be found at all levels, including various suppliers within the supply chain. Malaysia must be positioned in a globally relevant critical value chains, especially with the technology that leaves, leads to the overall electrification of the way we live. This includes electric vehicles. Food security and components of the food supply chain remain critical to avoid inflation. The Malaysian government, of course, continues to prioritize policies and ensure that the people are shielded during this time as we deal with unprecedented geopolitical disruptions. With that, we call also on the Malaysian government to continue its investment into digital physical security. And this, I, I believe, bodes well for Malaysia as an investment destination. Ladies and gentlemen, the Malaysia Global Business Forum was established to empower stakeholders at the intersection of international and Malaysian business through government relations, business intelligence, advocacy, media engagement, market research, networking, advisory, and business matching. The Malaysia Global Business Forum will continue to explore the threats and opportunities within, with industry leaders, policymakers, to ensure Malaysia becomes a leader within the context of business in Asia. I leave with you three questions for today's discussions and how we are going to address designing and future-proofing a crisis-resilient supply chain, crisis-resilient value chains. The first question, how do nations compete? And by extension, how will Malaysia compete? What are the critical control points in digital and physical infrastructure that we need to protect? And how will we effectively integrate cyber and physical systems in the public-private paradigm? These are the, the key questions that we must address. I want to thank everyone who is here today in the room and those who are joining us online. And I'll be sure to ask everyone to put their comments uh, online so we can uh, put them in our report. Uh, of course, we, we prepare a report for all government departments following uh, each and every round table. With that, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Salam alaikum and a very good morning. I've got a, I've got a I need a stool. <laughs> Thank you, Nordin, for that warm uh, welcome speech. Um, next up, we have uh, Mr. Muruge Murugesan. Mr. Murugesan Aratangaratnam, Executive Chairman of Advanced Security Network, for his opening speech. Could we have you on board, Mr. Muru? Good morning. Uh, Selamat pagi, everyone. Uh, special mention to YB uh, Senator Datuk Rasadi Baradsi. Uh, she's someone, uh, you know, I think many people admire. She doesn't realize how many people she has actually inspired uh, from, you know, uh, so it's great to have her here. Okay, uh, I uh, have been given a topic. Can I have my slides? Yep. Thanks. Just four slides. That's it. Uh, I didn't choose the topic. As usual, it's chosen for me by, by Noreen. He never asks me. He'll just give me a topic and then he asks <laughs> he asked me to prepare. But I think it's, it's, it's a, a pretty interesting one. Uh, critical control points in digital and physical infrastructures. Now, uh, basically, uh, we are on the third event and uh, the, the theme is actually uh, resilience. And when we're talking about resilience nowadays, we're talking uh, mainly towards digital because that's where we are all shifting towards uh, and everyone's uh, jumping on the bandwagon and going to the cloud. Uh, not exactly the best thing to do, but uh, you know that's 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 a trend everyone seems to be following. And uh, so a lot of uh, things are being digitized now. Uh, we often hear this uh, term digital transformation, which I personally don't like. Uh, I call it mindset transformation. Uh, so I think uh, it's it's more changing of mindsets and and realizing that we are living in two different worlds now: uh, physical. Each one of us as individuals is living in the physical and the digital world. 
So I think we need to be be aware of that. Now, uh, the problem with me when I give talks like this is the day before I get uh, butterflies in the stomach. Not because uh, I have nothing to say. I have a lot to say. It's just uh, determining what I can say, should say, and should not say. You know, so that's you know, I'm, I'm, uh, diplomacy is not my uh, strongest suit. So, but I'm I'm going to highlight something which just happened recently, uh, without mentioning names, uh, like the data leak that happened recently, uh, involving 22 over million uh, Malaysians' uh, uh, information. I know there was a statement made uh, uh, on behalf of the government that national security was not compromised. I'm not concerned about national security. Of course, it's in the, uh, it's important for every citizen to be aware of national security. But there's also something else called personal security. So, you know, you can't tell me that if my data is out there and it has been leaked, that my personal security has not been compromised. And uh, that is the, uh, it is a, a responsible uh, responsibility of a government, uh, of an employer, uh, of a parent, because I think that's basic needs. Uh, we need food on the table, uh, we need shelter, and we need security. So if you're going to be, uh, you know, handling my data, uh, you better make sure that it does not get leaked. You know, so I think, uh, and I... Uh, since we have a, a friend from the uh, 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 head of traffic here, I had a, I have a senior officer, a, a police officer friend of mine who actually sent me the article on that very day and asked me what to do next, boss. So I, I just gave him one sentence. I said, "Wake up! Stop being in denial." You know, I think that's very, very important when it comes to uh, cybersecurity and, and 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 data leakage. Okay, so now. Go to the next slide. Okay. So this is just, just an overview. It's not exhaustive, but this is basically a digital and physical infrastructure. So I'm sure most of you know all this. Uh, in the internet backbone, the uh, broadband networks, uh, you know, mobile telecommunication, uh, you know, communication uh, satellites. Uh, so it's a mixture of all the digital and physical infrastructure we are all uh, involved in directly, indirectly, uh, which affects our life on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I don't know, uh, of course you have IoT coming up, then you have got 5G coming in today, we've got the head of career development from DNB here today, Mr. Francis. Uh, so uh, it's, it's all growing at a, at a rate that it's quite frightening, you know. Uh, I think this thing is not working, let's go to the next slide, okay. So basically there are three critical control points as far as digital infrastructure security is concerned. And I think this is where uh, we have a representative from Cybersecurity Malaysia today, uh, which is one of the uh, agencies that uh, looks after uh, cybersecurity in Malaysia. Uh, and uh, I think they are all working towards this. We do not have uh, ACTA Cybersecurity, a Cybersecurity Act in Malaysia yet. Uh, the ultimate uh, end uh, result, hopefully sooner than later, should be an act. So when that act comes into play, then basically, cybersecurity becomes an audit requirement. It is no more uh, a, a voluntary thing. So if you are going to be dealing with data, whether you are the government or whether you are the uh, uh, corporate sector or whether you are, you know, it could be a pharmacy, because everybody's dealing with data today. You know, you go and buy a shoe at Hush Puppies, they ask you to become a member. You key in all your details very happily. They've got data. You know, so I don't need to hack into Mindef or MOF to get, uh, say, a 5 million people's data today. I just hack into Watson's. You know, so uh, the, you have to become a responsible uh, data holder. So that's that they're working towards that, but it's not in place yet. Okay, so I think uh, this is this these three critical control points are very very important. Qualifying trustworthy vendors. Uh, so you know, everybody is out there claiming to be a, a, a cybersecurity pen tester, for example. Everybody is out there giving you a solution, uh, but where is the trust mark? Uh, today, none of us will, uh, will probably take an injection if it's not uh, approved by the uh, Malaysian medical authorities, you know, or if it's in the US, the FDA. Once it's approved, then we say, okay, go ahead, stab me, you know. But if I were to just come and sell you a product which just does not have a, a, a trust mark or an approval, you're not going to accept it. When we go out there and buy, for example, a lightning arrester, we want to make sure it's serum approved, you know. So this is where uh, we need to work on this for the digital uh, industry. Okay, so qualifying trustworthy vendors. I'm just going to read some stuff from uh, just very quickly. Practically speaking, security does not end at the point where a vendor places a solution on the market. It's not as simple as just coming and plugging in, you know. 
how a critical uh, uh, infrastructure operator architects, deploys, monitor, and maintains its networks information systems on an ongoing basis is crucial to secure operations. A well-functioning security architecture that is resilient and trustworthy will help prevent, detect, and react to cyber threats. Trustworthy solutions are products or services that do what is expected and nothing more. Okay, so if you are supposed to just do this, you do that. There should not be a back end or there should not be a, another angle to it. Okay, vendors can and should build security capabilities into technologies at the design phase. So this is something I always emphasize. I have the benefit of being in the industry for a long, a long time and at the entire spectrum of security from physical to systems. And, and now I, I, I'm, I'm, I've got a legal qualification. Don't ask me what I'm doing is in cyber, but it does help me. Because not having the IT knowledge sometimes is an advantage for me because I look at it from a completely different angle. You know? So security should be by design. Uh, the internet was not designed for security. The internet was designed for ease of work and for speed. Security was an afterthought. You know? So you need to build security you know, at the design stage. Qualifying secure solutions. Uh, you should start, uh, this is for the government, for private sector, revising procurement regulations to mandate better assessment of vendor solutions is actually now overdue, okay? Government regulations should require that any technology deployed in critical infrastructure be procured only from proven trustworthy vendors. Derive that proof from mandatory security assessments, okay? Start by leveraging baseline measures of adherence to simple security measures that are already captured in internationally recognized standards such as common criteria. Many people don't know about this. There is a standard called common criteria, but um, the gentleman from CSM will, will back me on this. Uh, uh, they are one of the, I think, one of the six or seven, panel, if I'm not mistaken, who are actually given the right to, to uh, issue the common criteria certificate. So that's basically the gold standard on network security. Okay? At the moment, it is not mandatory. So obviously, if there's an ACTA cybersecurity, then it is no more choice. You got to go and get yourself certified. But uh, there is a common criteria certification which is highly respected. It's basically is something you. It's like a, a going through a pharmaceutical grade for your your medical product. So it, it goes through a stringent test. And these are useful as uh, as a starting point and can serve as appropriate yardsticks for technology deployed broadly in in less critical networks. For mission critical networks, comprehensive security assessment should be conducted by recognized trusted experts. Okay, and the last one is qualifying responsible operations. Migrating to digital capabilities requires critical infrastructure providers to keep pace with the latest threat monitoring and detection technologies because technology is moving so quickly. So you got to be on the ball because they can no longer be upgraded to mitigate new threats. Dated or end of life software and hardware constitute two of the major risk to architectural security and resilience. This is a problem that we have in Malaysia. I, I, to be fair, it's not only Malaysia. I think even most developed countries are still grappling with cybersecurity because things have happened so quickly and so many people have gone online over the last two years. But in Malaysia, we, the, one of the, 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 the pain points we have is legacy systems. You know? So you know, in terms of, we've got Mr. Uh, who, who actually were from uh, the CEO of Big Data, uh, Data Works here. And I'm sure he knows because he is, he is dealing with the, one of the government agencies. And uh, across the board, I mean, if, if you're, we're not only talking about KL, uh, Malaysia is not KL. Malaysia is Malaysia, you know. So if you're talking about, you know, the land office in, say, Perlis, or if you're talking about uh, another government agency in, 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 in Klantan, you know, so they all are stuck with legacy systems. Many ministries are now upgrading. So in the future, moving forward, when you're going to inv uh, invest in systems, because these systems are not cheap, make sure that the vendor has got systems that are scalable, okay, so, so that you're not stuck with something that is obsolete one year, two years down the road, okay. So... Uh, it's important to patch and upgrade proactively and not wait until something bad happens. Okay, there's a WannaCry uh, ransomware that happened recently and, and that, that basically spread through unpatched uh, software. I'm not going to go into the technicality of that. Uh, governments and operators can collaborate with IT vendors to properly patch or decommission outdated technology that wasn't built to withstand today's threats and bad actors. Okay, and finally, uh, verify and then trust. The path to earning and maintaining the position of a tr trusted partner is full of qualifying checkpoints. The digital world with its highly complex interwoven systems and ballooning volumes of data requires a new level of trust. Words of assurance alone are not enough. Vendors must demonstrate a range of behaviors that prove they are trusted partner and then integrate those behaviors consistently throughout the operations. Okay, last slide. It's the last slide. Okay, so basically, 
Now we're talking about Malaysia. How, how do we secure, we have a secure national cyber ecosystem? The first thing is intelligence sharing. Data security, cyber security doesn't make sense if you don't share intelligence. I'll give you a simple example. You live in a neighborhood, your neighbor has gone for a, uh, for a holiday. There's someone strange who comes every day to a, uh, at a certain time uh, and, and stands outside your neighbor's gate, peeps in and goes away. Okay, so that is intelligence. The time that he comes, the time that he leaves, what he is wearing, how he looks, that's your data. Now, it doesn't make sense if you don't share that with your neighbor. You know, two months later, you, uh, you, you find your neighbor, uh, you know, was found dead in, in, in inside the house. Okay, so uh, intelligence sharing is very important. And I think, let me just, you know, address the elephant in the room. We don't do that. Everyone is keeping their data to themselves. Everyone's working in silo. So I think cybersecurity is never going to be effective if you don't share intelligence and data. And this is not only a national level. It can even be on the international level with your, your partners in ASEAN, Southeast Asia. It has to be affiliated as opposed to silo. You've got to work as a team. I know for a fact that we are not at the moment. Okay? Hopefully things improve. Uh, but uh, everybody seems to be on their own tangent. Uh, everybody has got their own uh, way of looking at things. Everybody is protecting their... It's not their data to protect. It's, it's my data. It's your data. So everybody seems to be protecting their data. Okay? I keep telling people, you know, they tell me it's only data, what? nothing. I said, hello. As we speak now, our data is being monetized for some, by somebody else. Yeah. So and and we come from a, a generation, you know. At least I, I think most of us are about the, you know, uh, we come from a generation where we used to be so protective of our personal diaries. If your own brother or sister takes your personal diary, we jump up and down. But today, our data is all over the world. It's being shared by every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Our movements, what we do, where we go, you know, our status on we are taking off now, we are landing now. And we don't seem to be concerned about it. So we, we need to really uh, take a step back and look at that. So and, and we start the agencies have to start working, you know, together. It cannot be in silo. If it's in silo, then it's it's very difficult to move forward. And this is the most important thing which I am very passionate about. It's a sovereign framework. Our security is our security. Okay. Obviously, you know, we have uh, vendors from from you know. Uh, who have been there, who have been, you know, ahead uh, of the game, uh, the, the Microsofts and the Amazons and the, and the Huawei's and of the world. Uh, we probably have to use them as, as a, 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 a platform to learn. But eventually, we need to have our own sovereign cybersecurity framework. That's going on now in Europe. In Europe, it's actually, they have actually got a European cybersecurity framework that is being built now. Uh, a, a, a certain company is actually the prime integrator for the entire uh, framework. And the end game is basically to have European products, European systems for Europe. Okay, so sovereignty is very, very important. Just by going to the cloud doesn't solve any problem. Who is the cloud company? How is the cloud, which, com which country does the cloud company belong to? So what are you talking about? How can it be secure? You're giving your data to another country, literally. Okay, so a sovereign framework, and I'm sure my my my, uh, my uh, a friend from the police department will will back me up on that because I know PDRM has been very insistent, has been very insistent on that because I've got uh, friends in the in the police force and they they are, they've always mentioned that they, you know they get very jump up and down whenever they see a government task force with uh, private vendors sitting on it, you know, and especially if it's foreign vendors, it's okay if it's a Malaysian company, you know, so but. To have a, a, a company that is, you know, uh, has got nothing to do with the Malaysian uh, security because security has to be sovereign. Well, uh, you you can't you can't uh, uh, ask your your neighbor to look after your spouse, you know, when you're away. So it, 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 if he's a if he's a good guy, then you you probably it's okay, but it's still risky, you know? you know. So your security is your security. So I think that's what I want to say, and uh, I, I'm eager to learn from everyone here today. Uh, but uh, we need to uh, take cybersecurity very seriously. Uh, cyber warfare is a reality. Uh, I'm proud, I used this word about two years ago in a forum, and, and at that time no one actually used it, uh, but I actually went out and said it. Cyber pandemic is a reality. 
Okay, so just imagine on a, on a long Hari Raya break and you're driving back to your kampong uh, and you've got four days or five days holiday coming up. You stop over at the Petronas, you put your card into your, into your ATM machine and it says, hello. <laughs> and you're not able to withdraw your money. So can you imagine the panic across the, uh, the nation? Can it happen? Why not? If I told you three years ago, we'll all be wearing masks, uh, sitting one uh, meter apart, not being able to visit our family members, you would have laughed at me. So a cyber pandemic is a reality, uh, and we can already see the incidents that are happening. But the most important thing is to accept it. Do not deny it. If it happens, it happens. It happens to the best of us. There's no such thing as 100% security. You cannot guarantee 100% security. So you got to actually turn it around and say, yes, a data breach has happened. Turn it around and tell the people that we have to be extra careful, we have to be extra vigilant. You know, So we need to have this us against them uh, concept. So them being the, the bad guys, they're always ahead. We got to also accept that because they are focused only on hacking. We are focused on looking after our systems, looking after our families, looking after our company, looking after... So we've got too many things to focus on. They're only focused on hacking. So definitely, they're always one step ahead. Uh, so I hope I know I, 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 I've given some, some indication of how cyber is. And uh, before I leave, I, I always feel when I, you know, I say something, I need to leave it some tips at, at least. So for all of the, those here, uh, I don't know how many of you all do, but follow some basic cyber hygiene. Uh, you'll be surprised the number of directors and CEOs I present to. We'll be talking about very, very high-tech security systems and this and that, threat intelligence and all that. When I ask them a simple question, do you update your phone or not? You mean you have to update your phone? I say, of course you got to update your phone. Do you update? You go to your Play Store and update your apps. Oh, I thought that's auto update. I say it's auto update, but sometimes it does miss. You know? Uh, do you switch off your location? Oh, I have to. So these are the basic questions I I I, I throw back. So that's very important because today, eighty percent, ninety percent of the people are working from endpoints, from your mobile, from your desktop. So there are even you know, for example, the banks they are pretty mature. The telcos. They are pretty mature. They are cybersecurity po posture. They invest a lot of money on cybersecurity, but most of it is on prem. Okay, even they never expected that ninety percent of their staff will be working from home using their home Wi-Fi's. So cybersecurity companies themselves had to pivot and change their strategies over the last two years. So follow basic cyber hygiene because uh, when you, we look at the entire chain of people, process, and technology, I never worry about technology because technology is about basically how much you can afford. If you can afford an iPhone, you buy an iPhone. If you can afford uh, uh, an Oppo, you buy an Oppo. Technology is there for the right price. But the people and the processes, and normally the weakest link is the people. And data leakage normally happens there. So most of you all are bosses and, and, and leaders of your own, own uh, industries. So ask yourself, do you update your phones? Uh, do you update your, your, your and uh, invest in... a uh, 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 an, uh, an antivirus. There are also cyber defense uh, uh, apps now. Okay, so obviously some of these apps, most of them are, are verified when they go through the Play Store or the Apple I Store. But once the Cybersecurity Act comes in, there will be an additional, so they'll become a trusted app. So that's very uh, very important when you're talking about security. Security, cyber risk is is on par with financial risk. Okay, so cyber and financial and health, and I think all they are on 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 par. So thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the session today. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, thanks to the organizers uh, who always do a wonderful job. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for your presence. Uh, it's an honor, honor to be here today. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Muru. Very eye-opening. And honestly speaking, I'll be the first to admit that uh, I'm a big victim of uh, personal data leakage. <laughs> you throw me a discount and I'll give you my details. <laughs> it happens in every shop. You know, I go in there, fill up this form and I'll give you a discount. Yeah, 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 why not? Give me a pen. I've got to be a bit more secure right now and be a bit more alert on these things. I believe that also, if you look at it, the new generation as compared to the older generation is a little bit more, uh, uh, how do I put it? They, they, are, they don't look at the security aspect of things as how the older generation do. Uh, first and foremost, if you look at uh, social media. Now, when, if, you, if you go onto Instagram and you'll see the lives of people from when they wake up from, from, from bed 
till they go to bed. Their whole life is recorded. You know, it's, it's a hip post. But the thing is, after listening to Mr. Muru earlier, I believe that people are actually watching this and people are actually taking note of this. And what happens from there? Your, 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 your data is actually leaked. You know, and, and things like that. So I think that it's a, it's a big eye-opener, not just for me, but for everyone out there. And for those who are watching online, you know, uh, we've, got a, we've got a huge crowd online as well. So for those who are watching online, I hope that you have taken notes from this as well. And uh, also to mention that everyone here, please, and all, all those online, please leave your comments. Leave your comments and, and, and uh, we will get them uh, addressed. Yep. Now next, please allow me to invite Colonel T.S. Azali bin Sakardi, uh, Sukardi. Senior Vice President of the Strategic Research Division at uh, Cyber Securities Malaysia. Could we have Mrs. Uh, T.S. Azali, please? Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Uh, Wabi Datuk, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to share my perspective on this topic. Uh, it is a big topic uh, with regard to uh, cyber physical system in a private public paradigm. and uh, But it is the technology, the environment that will be dominant in our life. Eh? Uh, especially when we talk about uh, fourth industrial revolution, IoT, eh? and furthermore, cyber eh? has become the world by itself. That is why we call it cyber world. And today, cyber world and physical world are very much interconnected and very much interdependent on each other. Of course, uh, it uh, increases our productivity and uh, give more efficiency in our activities, but uh, high interdependency also exposes us to the various risks of cyber attack because any disruption on a digital system it can have direct implication on our life in physical world because our life our well-being is very much dependent on digital system in cyberspace so this topic is very important and uh, uh, we want to see how uh, technology has changed not only the way we live, not only the way business uh, conduct activities, but more importantly, technology also changed the way threats are evolving. So uh, it is very important also, uh, we perceive, uh, we, uh, we change our perception and the way we manage cyber security. So in order for me to address this topic and to discuss the issues, let us first try to understand our digital landscape and try to look all the various uh, emerging technologies uh, within this uh, 15 minutes and try to identify risk eh, if we got to cyber physical system. And from there, we try to uh, uh, come up with uh, the best possible solution in order to uh, protect our cyber physical environment. Eh. So there is no straightforward solution. Eh. It depends on how we assess the risk and how we want to, uh, uh, to manage a cyber security. Okay, so these are the various technologies in our cyber environment. Digital transformation happen very fast. Eh? Technology becomes smarter, embedded by artificial intelligence. Today, technology tells us what to do. And even most of us are wearing smart watches. It is the technology that read our blood pressure, heart rate, and even body sugar content. And it is technology that can remind us before we suffer from uh, heart attack, hypertension, or diabetes. Eh? And at the same time, our world become more and more interconnected, making our cyber, cyber environment become more complex. And we have already talked about Internet of Things, Internet of Everything. All the various technologies are converging and merging, becoming one single entity. Eh? Cyber physical connectivity emerging. Eh? So th these are the situation that we have. In the past, internet connect people. People connect data and collaborate with each other in the in internet environment. But when we talk about internet of things, internet connect devices, smart devices. It is devices that uh, 
uh, collect data, process information. And it is also things that share information with other things within internet environment. And they are collaborating with each other without human intervention. This is what happening in smart manufacturing. Smart technology uh, uh, powered by artificial intelligence do the activities. It is a smart technology that perform all the activities from production, delivery, uh, packaging, and even technology can request for equipment servicing and equipment uh, uh, replacement. And all these things done without human interventions. So because population grows, business becomes tougher. And uh, uh, at the same time, stakeholders, customers demand very efficient services. The old methods can handle these activities. So uh, authorities, organizations have no choice than to utilize modern technology in order to deliver such services. So these are the trends that we are going. And uh, when we talk about Industry 4.0, what is the significance? It is about cyber physical connectivity. But before we can understand Industry 4.0, let us look at the previous Industrial Revolution. The first Industrial Revolution, uh, we saw the invention of machine that replaced human labor. Eh? Second Industrial Revolution, the invention of electricity that lowered the production eh, in the factories. And during this era, we can see the expansion of industry. The third industrial revolution, we saw the invention of computers, microchip, and internet. Technology start to replace human brain because it is the computers that help us in planning and decision making. And through the use of artificial intelligence, it helped us to make decision. And Today we are already in, we are we are entering uh, industry 4.0 fourth industrial revolution. So it is about combination of all the previous industrial revolution, physical, cyber, and brain connectivity. So it offers a lot of benefit, but at the same time, as we go high tech and more advanced, remember, so do cyber threat, criminal, and cyber attack. So as I mentioned by the previous speaker, yeah? uh, technologies are invented to provide convenience, but security is not convenient. Yeah? Uh, if I ask uh, most of us which, to, uh, uh, which one to, to choose within security and convenience, we choose convenience. But this is where the uh, security issues are arising yeah? from, from the uh, user themselves because we choose convenience over security. And today we are living in the world where security and risk coexist. There is no zero risk environment. We cannot achieve 100% security in this environment. So how to balance? Because it is a decision by top management. That's why in cybersecurity we have risk management. Okay. So without we realize, eh, when we connect to uh, internet, eh, devices, process, we actually, we, don't, we realize we change the digital ecosystems because digital ecosystem is already changing with more technology, with new devices, with new connectivities, but we don't realize. And it may lead to the creation of new digital business supply chain. By right, we have to reassess the environment, but how many of us reassess the risk in this new environment? Because the security of every link, every linkage in this digital, digital supply chain within the ecosystem are very important. Because every link, every point can be the weakest link. And every link and every uh, point within the ecosystem are very much interdependent on each other. And some of the link can be the critical links. So we have to manage the weakest link. Because if any being broken within the change, the whole security chain will be broken. You see, security is about the change. Yeah? So, okay, I don't want to speak about uh, the conversion of operational technology or information technology, but basically in the past, eh, the technology, the computers that control the physical operation in the industry by generators, machine, they are in industrial environment. They are not connected to cyber world. But today, with the conversion of OT, operational technology, and IT, these physical operations in industry are connected to cyber world. So that means uh, 
uh, that means that we can access this operational technology from the cloud, from the cyber environment, our handphone. Eh? We can use various services eh, in the cloud through cloud computing to access this operational technology. So it's very convenient. But what are the consequences? Any disruption on a digital system, it can cause a disruption on our life. Because in the past, when we talk about security, it's about confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. Because we're talking about information. But because of cyber physical connectivity, security concept has expanded from uh, CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability, to safety. Because our life is there. Just imagine if cyber attack happened on hospital. Any medical disruption can kill the patients because patients rely on that medical system to support their life and to survive. Also imagine a cyber attack on uh, computers that control physical operations in, in industry, the temperature, the, the, the pressures, by generators, equipment, and so on. Any disruption on this computer or machine can cause the, what, the, uh, the equipment to go haywire and maybe can cause explosion and can kill the people inside the factory. Also imagine cyber attack on aircraft system. Any uh, disruption on navigation, communication system, air traffic control system can cause, can cause the, aircraft, the aircraft to crash and kill the passengers. So these are the consequences of physical cyber system and even can inflict casualties. Yes, it is convenient. That is why uh, cyber security is very important. Not to be as obstacle or stumbling block, but rather cyber security come in to act as enabler, to help the organization to ensure secure application of technology, namely cyber physical system, so that we can benefit from the advancement of technology to achieve our business objective. We are not here to be stumbling block, eh? because we are here to to act as enabler. Yeah. Okay. okay. So when we talk about critical services, eh, uh, Malaysia has identified 10 services as critical. Why it is critical? Because any disruption on this critical national information infrastructure, it can undermine national security. Just imagine cyber attack on hospital medical system attack on uh, telecommunications. So how long we can live without, uh, without uh, able to have a financial transaction? Our banking is not functioning. We cannot use our credit card, debit card. We cannot withdraw money. How long we can live? We cannot pay uh, goods when we want to purchase something from the supermarkets. So how long we can live? Yeah. So these are the 10 sectors considered critical. And they are national assets. And some of the sectors are not public sectors. For example, uh, telecommunication, financial, they are private sectors. So, but in today's environment, when we talk about Industry 4.0, there are cyber physical system connectivity. And so we have to secure yeah, uh, the, all the connectivity. Any link is possible threat. And in cyber environment, you have no idea where the threat comes from. And in fact, we have no idea who are behind the machine. Because internet provides anonymity, meaning anybody can be anybody. But to prove that identity is almost impossible. And internet is cross-border. That means if I'm criminal, I, have to, I don't have to be there in location to conduct cyber attack. It can be somewhere else. And in a cyber attack also, I don't have to attack directly. I can use proxy, maybe seven or seven, eight layers. So these are the complexity of internet. So you know, when we talk about physical cyber environment, so you can imagine every point within the networks is very important. We have to secure on every point. There's no, we have to implement zero trust strategy, eh? authentication to verify and to identify the people, the access uh, to our IT resources. Any mistake can be damaging. So I am reminded my time is up. I, yeah, thank you. Big topic, so many to cover. Thank you very much for your patience. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
actually. Thank you so much, Colonel. Um, yeah, we were not trying to get you off stage. Don't get us wrong, yeah? <laughs> I just stood there because I was sitting for too long. <laughs> now, uh, just to be reminded of something the Colonel said earlier, i just like to quote him there. Our life is dependable on the cyber world. I, those words mean a lot. I'll give you a short example before we move further. The other day, I met up with uh, some old colleagues and uh, we went to a restaurant. There was about six of us on the table. We ordered our food and the food looked delicious. So automatically, I picked up my fork and my spoon. I was about to dig in and they all said, stop. So I think, what's going on? They needed to take a picture to put it on social media before I could eat my food. See, that's how technology has gotten dependent, uh, uh, your life has gotten dependable on technology. And it's a very small aspect of things. I can see a lots of changes, a lots of things that are happening around us. Yep. And um, maybe, maybe next we'll, we'll have the next person to address something for us uh, in this uh, forum. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, it's about time now for the panel session. So uh, the panel session is on addressing disruption in supply chain. Uh, I'd like to invite all the speakers on stage. One by one, I'll mention your names first. Yeah, uh, Please welcome, everyone, please put your hands together and welcome young Berhormat Senator Dato Ras Adiba Razi, uh, who is the chairman of the Malaysian National News Agency, Bernama, uh, an idol of mine personally, the whole reason I became a journalist. Uh, ACP... Sarifuddin bin Muhammad Saleh, Head of Traffic Investigation and Enforcement Department, someone I'd like to be very good friends with. <laughs> um, Francis Ko, Head Career Development, Digital National Berhad. Uh, M. Umapati Sivan, former CIO of Telecom and Senior Advisor to uh, Novem CES. And I will also like to invite a very good colleague of mine, Rosanna Muhammad, the editor at large for News Hub Asia, who will moderate the panel session. Uh, wish you all the best. And I'll get off the mic. Mic's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Prasad. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've just been told that five minutes is needed. Technical glitch. Everyone here needs to be mic'd up. So till they are all mic'd up, I think I've got the mic. <laughs> okay, I'll share another story with everyone. And the other day, 